<laughs> I'm telling you now, if you play that ball back to him, he's going to be offside. Yeah, but I think I can make something work here if I'm just a little bit... No, I'm telling you, I can see down the line, if you pass the ball back to... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, you're stupid! Alright, big man. No, that should be plural technically. There's quite a lot of you. Alright, big men and big women. Nah, that, that sounds then as if I'm calling everybody overweight. Forget about the intro. Welcome back to football this week. This, of course, is a series where I bring you the best and more frequently the worst of what football has to offer online during the course of the week. Now, this series is back to being weekly after my break and after football this month for last time. We're back to seeing this one every seven days, which is, of course, why the Premier League has chosen to start its winter break. Yep, thank you for that, you load of absolute freeloaders. The staggered winter break has come into effect. We've got some teams playing one weekend and then the rest playing the next. And it means that players get a chance to unwind, relax and go on holiday. Mostly to Dubai for some reason. Everybody just, you're not original at all. Does this mean that players from the UAE come over to Britain for their winter break? Or who from the Middle East would want to miss out on sites like Blackpool Tower, the trams of Croydon or just Sunderland generally speaking? Even whilst on this winter break, break, Liverpool have somehow managed to pick up some kind of trophy. It was done, however, with our alternate kit and alternate badge and alternate players. But not everyone's gone away. Some players are deciding to try and use their time wisely. Trent Alexander-Arnold decided upon a Twitter Q&A. Hashtag ask Trent, would you rather play with Messi or Ronaldo? Jordan Henderson. Can't lie, Trent, I don't feel like you've got the concept of this question nailed down. Someone asked him about Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain wanting to be on free kicks in as he'd beat him in a free kick challenge in training. Trent basically replied saying you can't always get what you want. And I get what he's saying. Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain wants free kicks. Trent Alexander-Arnold wants pregnant girl. But I'm not quite as sure about his teammates' decisions. I think there's a possible handball in there. This is disgraceful once again. Liverpool back in effect. The referee's not picking it up. They're clearly bribing the FA. Now, Manchester City were meant to be playing, but the game was called off or postponed because of Storm Kira or Kiara that's been hitting and slapping the UK recently. But don't let this light drizzle and slightly aggressive breeze distract you from what's really going on here. And you can expect gusts of wind and gales throughout the day with wind speeds reaching up to 80 miles per hour as Storm Kira can Now, the players are kind of tired right now, and we've got extremely heavy rain and a lot of wind coming for the next game against West Ham. Pep, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Oh, for fuck's sake, my hair's gonna get ruined. What do you mean? You don't even have any hair. What are you talking about? It is quite clear and obvious that Manchester City have manifested a storm and or hurricane and have designed it to hit the UK at the precise time that they had to play West Ham in order to give their starting 11 more time to rest and Raheem Sterling a chance to get back into the side before the game actually happens. I think it's about time we saw an investigation on this issue. Why are you booing me? Uh, you know I'm correct. Jose Mourinho has showed his solidarity by standing with Pep in such a difficult time. There's no particular difficult time. It's just difficult being bold. So Arsenal also had no fixture over the weekend. So they've been on their break. And David Luiz has been spending his time very wisely indeed. why Arsenal don't keep any clean sheets anymore. David Luiz is too distracted from the game thinking about his next prank on the squad. Meanwhile, Nicolas Pepe and Matteo Gunduzi were giving a very honest interview during the week. Gunduzi asked Pepe who he thought was the most difficult defender that he's faced in the league so far, and he replied, none of them. What do you mean? You've got less goals than trims this season, and your trim is just the same all over, but in varying millimetre lengths. Why are you lying unprovoked? You've provided less sauce in the final third than a white family at dinner time and they don't even use condiments on anything. It's ironic that in a week where Robbie from AFTV has been getting memed for dubs, the players themselves continue to take L's. There was at least some games over the weekend though. Sheffield United came back from 1-0 down to beat Bournemouth 2-1. Blades legend Billy Sharp and Lord Lundstrom got the goals to put Sheffield United within two points of the Champions League places. Just imagine the scenes if Sheffield United actually 
get into Europe. Oli McBurney sh** towsing a tapping at the Bernabeu. Lionel Messi up against Ender Stevens on the right hand side at the Camp Nou. I might be getting ahead of myself, but Sheffield United's Twitter account was certainly allowing themselves to as well. Meanwhile elsewhere, Everton faced Brighton and beat them 3-1. However, the goal they did concede was a howler from Jordan Pickford. He genuinely has less chance of getting into the England squad than the entirety of the Windrush generation at this point. Not only was it a disgraceful mistake, it gifted Chris Christian Benteke his first goal in the league since 1863. Richarlison scored an incredible solo goal to restore Everton's lead. Maybe the £100 million prize tag was worth it after all. No, I absolutely wasn't. Gibral, you... You're missing a sock there, mate. Are you sure? Now, as part of an Adidas campaign for one of their new football boots, Kaka found himself playing football on a six-a-side pitch in London. And it was five minutes away from where I live, but I didn't get to see it, and I'm still depressed about it now. The Brazilian scored an absolute banger. It's to be expected. But what about this went viral? I hear you cry. How are you gonna be screaming cut back to a player who's won the Champions League with AC Milan and won the Ballon d'Or? Listen, you're 26 and from Shoreditch. Kaka is not gonna cut the ball back to you. The only thing getting cut back in this situation is your salary. To be honest, it's jokes though. I rate the confidence to be able to do that to such a legendary player. But at the same time, if I was at that six aside game and I heard you do that, I'm double footing you. Whether you're on my team or not, over in a championship, a fan managed to get Bold Martin on the big screen, otherwise known as Morgz's dad. I'm sure it's not an appearance he was expecting, though it can't be any worse than being in a Morgz video at the moment. <laughs> Meanwhile, over at Millwall... <laughs> The coronavirus has been in the news. It seems to be traveling to every single country and infecting approximately three people at a time. It was a convoy for people returning from China to England and it was traveling through Milton Keynes. But for some reason, it looks like they're traveling to an MK Don's away day fixture. Now over in Europe, in a fiercely contested derby, Inter came from 2-0 down against AC Milan to win 4-2. It was an unbelievable game. Zlatan Ibrahimovic scored for AC Milan whilst Romelu Lukaku was the eventual hero for Inter. This shot of him putting his shirt on the corner flag is absolutely amazing. No idea why he chose to smell it afterwards, but we move. Speaking of entertaining and close leagues, the Bundesliga is next up and there was a stonker of a game there too. Emre Chan scored a banger for Borussia Dortmund and late on in the game they thought they had it sewn up at 3-2, but two goals in two minutes for Bayer Leverkusen saw them win the game 4-3. The Bayer Leverkusen Twitter admin though, he was absolutely loving his life. Absolutely stonking signature there as well. I think it's only right that we give whoever this person is, male or female, the shithousery award for this week. Probably could have gone better. Hello all and welcome to the beautiful game. The segment where we take a look at the poetic and brilliant side of the game that we love. We are back by popular demand for yet more glorious beauty. And that concludes the beautiful- Now nah, listen, bun the beautiful game graphics. What is going on? Is that an own goal with a 1-2 in the middle of it? I think we need a new term for the French League because even an actual farmer could have dealt with that ball while simultaneously milking some kind of farm animal. Three fans in the away end. That three, that's it. There's more limbs in Oscar Pistorius' prison cell, honestly. Okay, all right. This is my moment. I've just got to wind up this free kick. I've done this so many times in training. This is going straight in the top corner, I'm telling you, lads. Ah, I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> Over in Brazil, I don't know who this guy is who scored, but we need to pray for him. He reckons the goal stands, the linesman's given offside, and he's done the take the L celebration. My son, the linesman, has literally given you an Uno reverse card. You have taken the L. <laughs> 
But now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for Still Nil Nil, and you guys know what this is all about. This is a segment of the show where I bring in the best of Sunday League action during the course of the last seven days. We've got two parts, and honestly, both of them are absolutely magical. First of all, we've got a game that looks like it's being played in Storm Kira, but it's actually in Spain. This Sunday League game potentially has the worst football pitch ever seen in existence. It's in Spain, so I guess the Storm is like El Quiririno, or so, I don't know. Like, it's actually a joke. The goalkeeper there has actively entered a swimming pool. Now, I mentioned Storm Kira, but this clip has most certainly been affected by it. So the team in white are on the ball. It's sort of bouncing around. Goes back to a defender who launches it long, but the wind blows it all the way back. Surely the keeper... If you want my guidance, keep the ball down on the floor. Over in Spain, Barcelona are wanting to replace injured Luis Suarez with Luis Suarez. And finally, over in Africa, the Egyptian Football Association reckon they've registered what they believe as the oldest professional player in history and in the world. A 30-year side have apparently signed a 74-year-old footballer. I don't understand what he can do in this situation. Just bat the ball away with his Zimmer frame. But on that note, that is it for football this week and I hope you have enjoyed. If you have, then slap a like on the video and subscribe if you're new to the channel. You can also follow me on social media. It is at the official FNG on Twitter and on Insta. But it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy yourselves and goodbye. Is it me? Is it me?